Are we um, the right way around? We're back. <laughs> I'm gonna put you up here. There we go. I just made this video. We were just live, right, for 30 minutes, and I realized that I was sideways. <laughs> so we're back, but we're with a cup of tea. Is everything good? Is this the right way around? Can someone comment that yes, this is the right way, or no, this is not the right way? It's been, I'm a little out of practice with our live streams because I've been so busy. I've been so busy. Um, cheers, you guys. We're back. <laughs> we're back with a cup of tea. Oh, that was so frustrating. We were just, we had just wrapped up like a really cool exploration of this um, beautiful genre of music, right? The Appalachian fiddle music. We played through some fiddle tunes and then I realized that I was sideways the whole time. So we're trying it again. <laughs> we're just doing it over. Um, but first we need a little chocolate. We need to recover emotionally from that. That was very frustrating. <laughs> but you know what's funny is that there was a lot of you there gratefully, thank you, for keeping me company while I was sideways. Hmm. <laughs> this is the magical lavender vanilla black tea that I love. Mm. But you know what? We're gonna delve into this absolutely amazing genre once again. Maybe play some other tunes as well. So for those of you that don't know, right? And I am not an I am not an expert on this at all. <laughs> I am just exploring this um, genre with you. We're gonna hold hands and we're gonna do this together. So have you guys heard Hilary Klug play? Have you heard any? You know, there's a famous song, Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? That's like it's like banjos, fiddle, guitar sing singing um it's just a really it's a really really awesome style of music and it's from america so i wanted to like i did last time i want to just show you a picture of this area or this region of the u.s um come on computer there we go so that you can see where we're talking about right so here we go here's our picture of the u.s here and everything that's colored in, in those colors, is I guess the Appalachian region of the United States. So you can see it's like a bit of Pennsylvania, a little bit of New York, some parts of Tennessee, West Virginia. Um, let's see exactly what it says here. Okay, Alabama, Georgia, Kentucky, Maryland, Mississippi, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, Tennessee, and Virginia, and all of West Virginia, right? It's, it's a really large region of the U.S., and um, I think that the music of Appalachia, I mean, I've been listening to this podcast. I mentioned this last time. I was listening to this podcast called the Bear Grease Podcast. It is so good, <laughs> so good. They just did a three-part series on um, this area and they were um, actually also exploring the music of this area. Oh my gosh, I was in the bath last night and I was listening to this podcast, listening to them talk about this fabulous music and this beautiful culture and I was so bewitched by it. I mean, I had come across, you know, we all have like come across, you know, American fiddle music and fiddle tunes and things but um, I just, I don't know, I never connected so deeply with it. And I just really loved it. He's talking about the more like rural aspects of this culture, um, not the kind of more modern mainstream parts of the culture, but more of like the rural part of the culture. So fabulous. Um, before I play you a little tune, the Smoky Mountains, the Great Smoky Mountains are in this area. And look how beautiful it is. There's a little waterfall, some beautiful things. And it's, you know, the, it's, those people are really close to the land there. They are, you know, sometimes if it's really rural, like living off the land, they know the, the seasons, they know the forest, they know the trails, they know everything like the back of their hand. And um, one of my best friends lives um, in Tennessee and she is super close to the land too, her and her husband, and she just had a little baby, my little niece. <laughs> She's precious. 
Anyway, look how gorgeous this is. So this music we're gonna explore is just really good feel good music. And the fiddle I think is a big part of it. Um, but there's also like the banjo, the guitar, like we said, the singers and all that kind of thing. So we're gonna explore, let me have another sip of tea. We're gonna explore this music using this book. This is called The Fiddler's Fake Book. And I've used it for years for Irish fiddle music and British Isles and you know, all that kind of like um, UK side of the spectrum music. And I just have never really delved much into the Appalachian music. He calls it old time. And the nice thing about this book is that it's literally, I would say it's like the Bible of fiddle tunes, whether it's like, you know, the other side of the Atlantic or if it's, hey Spock, fiddling is great fun to play. Yes, it is. It's nice to see you. It's been a while. <laughs> um, so whether, you know, what, what side of the pond you're on, it kind of explores that. He talks about um, types of tunes, genres, the tuning, modes and key signatures, tempo, rhythm, the bow, symbols and ornamentations, and then drones. And we're gonna just we're gonna just explore this time period together. So, get your moonshine, <laughs> and um, or your cup of tea or something, and let's just explore this together for a little bit. Mm. So I'm gonna turn over to page. If you have this book, it's probably gonna be better for you. You know, if you follow along with me, we can kind of explore this together. But um, if not, just Bear with me and we'll, I'll explain it as, much, as best I can. We're gonna start on page um, 15. So we're gonna look into the rhythm and then we're gonna talk about the bow and maybe a little bit of symbols, ornamentations, and then drones. So we're gonna explore this aspect and then we're gonna play through some, oh my gosh, I need to play you a fiddle tune first. Let me just play you a fiddle tune. Um, I really, I've had this song stuck in my head all day. It's called Fire on the Mountain, and it's because I heard Hilary Clude play this, you know, probably this morning, like, after I was listening to my new favorite podcast, the Bear Grease podcast. <laughs> Look them up on Spotify or on Apple iTunes, Bear Grease podcast. They did a three-part series on this part of, on this, like, part of the world, and it was so good. So, so good. It, all, it just brought tears to my eyes, like on several occasions, just hearing the stories of people and also, you know, him documenting their music and their culture. It's like a, it's actually a part of music history. I forget what it's, what it, it there's like a, there is like a, um, Bartok used to do that. He would go around and he would record the music of, um, you know, the peoples in his area. I think it was Bartok. And um, an ethnomusicologist, is that what it is? An ethnomusicology? It was just from that like stand part point, it was so, so special and I just really love it. I know how to say the word bear <laughs> instead of bear, bear, or acorn, acorn, or something. Anyway, <laughs> this is Fire on the Mountain. So I'm gonna do my best. As I said, I'm not a specialist in this type of music. And I'm gonna move you this way so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go, you guys. Okay, fire on the mountain. Whoops, <laughs> fire on the mountain. music so yeah we will we will definitely explore this but let's go ahead and go back to page what did I say page 15 so once again this is the fiddlers fake book you can get this on Amazon you might be able to get like the Kindle electronic version of it too I always like to have the actual book you know thank you Spock <laughs> thank you it's just feel-good music you know so the rhythm, 
Um, many, so we're going to talk about swinging the eighth notes. Have you ever heard that term? Oh my gosh, Paul, that's you. Hey, <laughs> thank you. Um, so swinging the eighth notes. Many fiddlers do not take the mathematical reality of eighth notes seriously, right? Eighth notes sound like this. One and two and one and two and. He's saying that this is especially true of bluegrass, Texas, and Western swing fiddlers, and for the playing of rags. The tendency is to play eighth notes in what can be approximated as the following triplety rhythm. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. It just sounds, it even sounds more interesting, you know, rather than just. You could practice your scale. That would be, that would be fun. So the next one, we're going to skip jigs because we're not really going to talk about jigs. The next one is the shuffle rhythm. And I think this is really awesome. I really like this. This is easy to incorporate to things. Um, the shuffle rhythm in many of the old time um, bluegrass tunes, oh, old time and bluegrass tunes, notes of longer duration, quarter notes, half notes, whole notes, can be played in a shuffle rhythm, right? So he has, so there's an accent on the beat two and beat four. One, two, three. If there was no accent, it would sound like this. One, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and with the accent. So it's kind of like the, the fingers kind of help out with the. It's like a tiny little bite, perhaps. I would assume um, if we turn the page gives you an example of plugging this in. This is, what is this again? This, the shuffle rhythm, the shuffle. I just love that. Shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. Here in the first two measures of Arkansas Traveler number one, and um, this one, I think a lot of us will know this one. The shuffle he's adding you're kind of breaking up the quarter notes so instead of he does but he's also adding a drone so he's picking up in this case the upper open string um, along with the first of the eighth notes class at 8 30 tonight on zoom for those of you that um, are interested we're using the hour book one graded course of violin playing it's every other thursday all that information on group classes together and they're really fun and sweet are on my website violinviolamasterclass.com anyway um, so that's the shuffle rhythm the next section is called the bow and let me grab a little piece of chocolate we need some more chocolate have you ever heard of the chocolate brand Cho, T-C-H-O, Cho, oh my gosh, they make the best chocolate. They used to have this one that was um, like cinnamon and cayenne pepper. It was to die for, it was so good. I don't think they make it anymore though. I'm one of those people that like puts cayenne pepper on everything. My favorite thing, side note, my recent favorite thing, recent being like the last month or so <laughs> um, for breakfast is to have some like peanut butter on toast using Ezekiel sprouted grain um, bread. I really love Ezekiel sprouted, sprouted grain bread. Um, put some peanut butter, put some cayenne pepper on, put some honey on. It's so good. It's so good. Okay, so the bow. Upon first picking up the fiddle, and after difficulty overcoming my initial horror at not knowing where to put my fingers, 
what? No frets, he says. <laughs> I quickly became mystified by the seemingly secret machination of the bow arm. Right, isn't it? I, that's also what I'm always, I'm always looking at these fiddle players. I'm like, how are they moving like that? It's just amazing. I would listen to and study tunes for hours on end, attending a Kabbalistic revelation. I love his sense of humor. I was constantly dogged by the question, when do you change direction? How many notes do you play in a bow? Are there patterns? Here are some answers to those questions. But first, another sip of tea. Okay. Bow direction. So it's usually preferable to start on the downbeat of a tune with a down bow, right? The, there's kind of this rule of the down bow where you want to start things on a down bow. Down is when the frog is going down, right? Up bow would be the frog going up. So if you were to start rather than up bow, it just, it, it doesn't have that strength as this. And beat one in the hierarchy of, of beats. One, two, three, four. One is super important. So we usually just start things on a down bow, unless there's like some reason we need to start on an up bow for artistic reasons, you know? Um, and he kind of goes into that. He talks about upbeats and things like that. But the thing that I'm interested in to, like exploring with you is the phrasing with the bow. So how we can use bowings to kind of like, um, organize the notes and make them more interesting sounding, right? Like if you just have a bunch of eighth notes, you can group them with different bowings and accents and it actually changes the way that they feel and you can make it sound really cool. So the simplest pattern, oh, sorry, we talked about that, just changing bows on each note. So the simple shuffle, this is common in English Cape Breton, which is Scottish, I think, and New England fiddling. It's also common among the less syncopated and more noty old time players, and we're focusing on the old time music for now. By the way, wouldn't it be awesome to like go study somewhere for like a weekend and learn how to like play fiddle tunes with some real fiddle players? That would just be, that's one of the things I really wanna do with this studio. <laughs> I really, really wanna do that. Um, okay. And even if you, even if you're not like at that, you know, cause I know a lot of us are like, well, I don't know, think that I could ever, you know, I don't think I could play that or whatever. You, I mean, just to be there to listen, to, to hear others trying to learn and maybe like kind of trying out some things too. I mean, I would just love that. I would love that. So anyway, the simple shuffle it's called. This pattern of one long bow followed by two short bows is at the core of a lot of old time and early bluegrass fiddling. This is the count, this is the melodic counterpart to the shuffle rhythm. So remember we were talking about the, the shuffle. So for this one, the simple shuffle is organized in eighth notes here. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. kind of the exact same thing it's just that a lot of times in our fiddle music we have a bunch of eighth notes we're playing so I think he's organized it in a way that we can kind of a plug into eighth notes which I think we will do a little bit later when we explore some tunes so there's another one called the Georgia shuffle and then we can like go have afternoon tea somewhere afterwards you know after we go play our fiddle music I guess that would be if we were in Scotland, <laughs> you know? Oh my goodness, Mark O'Connor. No way I will. Not aspiring to be <laughs> on the level of Mark O'Connor. But I think he is awesome. That would that would be fun to go explore his um, fiddle camp. I know he has like a fiddle camp. Um, so, all right, the Georgia shuffle. This is a variant of the simple shuffle. In addition to its use by old time and bluegrass musicians, it's used by many Irish fiddlers. Kevin Burke in particular comes to mind. So the Georgia shuffle, this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 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 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, e
tricky. messing that up <laughs> but anyway so there's another one the georgia shuffles complicated for me then you have syncopated shuffles these rely on the idea of putting groups of three into groups of four so if we just had a bunch of eighth notes he has it notated in double stops so i'm going to play two strings at once if we just had eighth notes one and two and three and four and four if we organize it in like he has it in three three two right three six and then two would be eight so one two three four five six shuffle and this one it says starting with an unaccented eighth note of the upbeat using the bow to group in pairs we get the following pattern so instead of thinking one um one two three four this would be a one and two and three and four and one and two and 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 so that's um syncopation um, and then he, and then there's a section on ornamentation and symbols and kind of talking about slides. You can slide up to a note, you can slide down to a note apparently too. And then he talks about drones and adding um, the open, like if your melody is on your upper string, right? Then like here. There's even a slide on that one. I like that. And then there, he gives an example of adding a drone if your melody's on the lower and you're adding an upper drone. So um, drones are cool. I like to I like to add, you know, you know, I like to add double stops. So if we get into some tunes, let's explore some tunes. So let's look at the very first page. I'm looking at page 21 where the tunes begin. You have an Irish fiddle tune. A British Isles song and by the way this is all in alphabetical order so we're in the A section here on page 22 we have our first old time actually two old time fiddle tunes so um, the first one's called Angeline the Baker number one and then we have Angeline the Baker number two so I'm gonna I don't think I played the, the second one on the last you know <laughs> sideways run through of this so maybe we play both of them um, I'm gonna just play it I'm going to show you the way it sounds just kind of plain Jane, right? If you were a classical musician, you'd just be like... Right, but I think that it doesn't, it's not really supposed to sound like that. So there's a few things we can do to shake it up. Um, the first one is maybe we could add a shuffle and maybe not so, not be so like then 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 with the eighth notes a slide not sure what you think about that or if that would be acceptable if you were if there is anybody that's like a real fiddler out there please don't laugh too much at me <laughs> um, be patient with the learning but um, yeah then there's there's the slides right there I think it sounds nice to add a slide on the last note here <laughs> I'm noticing like the way that you kind of organize the phrase if you're playing we're not really organizing it in like the right kind of you know like you have a certain kind of lilt to things so maybe doing trying to like emphasize beat one a little bit more and the other ones are just kind of along for the ride maybe that kind of makes it sound a little more but the other thing we can do is we could add a drone
I feel like it's probably helpful to have like your your other instruments to help like create everything together but I like this one so that was Angeline the Baker the other one is Angeline the Baker number two but first we need to can't let the tea get cold mm. it's getting a little bit cold for me <laughs> oh, I'll have to heat it up in the microwave so Angeline the Baker number two and this one has some specific drone moments. So let's see how this sounds. I'm thinking about the, um, starting to like feel like this definitely has a drive underneath it so maybe there's some ways we can like add some accents here and there to help things pop out actually add some bowing so I think the like we said like adding having certain bowings does definitely help with with um, bring out the character let's find another one so I the other one that I was looking at was um, cotton eye Joe because my friend Julian suggested I look at this one today I mentioned that I'm now obsessed with this genre so he's like oh you gotta play cotton eye Joe so Kanye Joe is actually in here. It is on page. Just don't know my alphabet, so like, give me a moment. Where is T? Cotton. There we go. Page 74. And this one, it says old time and it says drones. Both open and closed can be used throughout. I mean, it gives you a little example. So we're adding drones to the upper string and sometimes to the lower string. So, and there's also some slides in here. One, two, one, two, three. Oh. Oh, here, the fourth finger drone always gets me. doesn't quite sound right so you can kind of you can kind of follow your ear so if we go back to the beginning maybe we can add some shuffles my friend in Tennessee, Rochelle. I have to come learn how to play this music from you and your husband. <laughs> that would be fun. Oh my gosh, to do a video with them. Oh my goodness. So let's try the last one and I have to kind of go plan my lessons for the day. Let's explore the most fame, one of the most famous ones I think is the Orange Blossom Special. And I am slightly scared of this song. <laughs> this is quite difficult. So it's not going to be perfect, but we will try it. We shall conquer our fears and, and try it together. 
So this one is so awesome. It starts out with kind of like, it sounds like a train. thousand times faster than that. <laughs> I'm not gonna try it faster than that. What a cool tune though. Um, anyways, you guys, I think that's gonna wrap it up for our little exploration today. Check out the magical and fabulous The Fiddler's Fake Book and let's delve into this. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. <laughs> let's delve into this time period, not time period, genre together and maybe um, learn learn more about this even part of the U.S., you know, learning about this part of the world, it's really beautiful in fall, I've heard. So perhaps I will be able to take a little trip there and see what's going on, well, or sometime. But um, check out my website. All of the things are going on on my website. The group classes, what we're learning on Patreon, you know, the um, lessons. There's group classes that we do. There's one this evening at 8.30. There's a monthly get together that we've done for the last year and a half every month, except for this month. Um, we're gonna be meeting at the end of the month on Zoom and we just have a little tea time together. Practice, uh, play, you know, people, you don't have, you're never on the spot, um, but you can listen to those who wanna share, play what they've been working on. Sometimes we have a chat about this or that. We talk about instruments, we've talked about stage fright, we've talked about um, growth and like the tree rings. You know, we've talked about like so many things. I forget what we talked about, but we talked about some of the topics that are just kind of going on in, in our lessons every week. So I would love to have you there. Um, every Monday I post a couple videos to Patreon and we've been going through all the scales. We're almost done with all the scales. And the nice thing about Patreon is that I can put a post with it. So there's like a description about how to do things and more about the music theory behind it. Um, whereas on YouTube, you just get the video. You don't have like any of the explanation like with it. And it's pretty, um, it's pretty inexpensive <laughs> on Patreon to get all of that stuff. We're going to be starting a new series in a couple um, weeks. Well, actually, it's more than a couple weeks. We're going to be delving into the Schrodiak etudes. We're going to learn all about the left hand and really chisel out the intonation, work on speed, work on all the hand patterns, um, work on some bowings, things like that. Um, that's going to be a nice long series. So if you want to, you know, improve your left hand technique, check out, you know, join, join us there. There's only a small little group of us there on Patreon. It's like a precious little community there. And, um, yeah, so I'll see those of you at our group class tonight. And other than that, you guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for exploring this genre with me. And, um, maybe we can go learn from a real fiddle, t fiddle player sometime. That would be awesome. All right, check out the Bear Grease podcast. They are awesome. <laughs> Lots of love, you guys. Thank you for watching.